What's going on, Dash U? So guys, I think one of the beautiful parts about Dash U, and, and once again, we'll just let, we'll wait a couple of minutes to let people pile in, and then we're going to intro Alex, and then we're just going to get started. Um, but I think the beautiful thing about Dash U is that this is like a really tight-knit group of agency owners from all over the world. Like, it's literally beautiful. We have agency owners from almost country, almost every single country from all over the world in Dash University. So a lot of the times, most people can't join us live because it's like five in the morning where they're from. So yes. this, just so you know, Alex, this is going to go back in the membership area when we're done. And then everybody from Dash is going to be able to watch it on their own time. And then we're going to create a quiz and a lesson plan out of this whole thing. It's going to be a beautiful day. Love and it. also, if you have anything that you'd like to provide us, maybe like a PDF or a cheat sheet or something, which we can attach inside of the membership area, we would love to do that for you too. Amazing. I'm super excited, guys. I'm super, super happy to be here. I appreciate you having me, Chad. I'm going to blow some people's minds today, so I'm looking forward to it. I love it. So for those of you guys who don't know, um, this is Alex Shalinsky. Alex Shalinsky and I has a, have a lot in common, which is pretty awkward. Um, but uh, we, I met Alex um, at, I was speaking, or both of us were speaking at Rob Quinn's um, uh, mastermind. I think it was Six Figure Mastermind or something like that. I forgot the name, but it was uh, out in Missouri or Kansas or wherever the hell we were. Wherever I have no clue. We were, we were on the borderline of both. And uh, both of us, we met there. We realized that we grew up literally in the same neighborhood. Okay. We both do, we both run agencies. Uh, we both literally know the exact same people. Like it's, it's pretty crazy and it's mind blowing. So I was like, Alex, you're awesome. I got to get you on for an influencer secrets, uh, segment in our dash U um, course. And I'm so excited to have you on here. Uh, Alex, if you can, maybe tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you're doing, where you started from, where you're at now. Just give us a quick little intro. Sure. Uh, so yeah, my name is Alex Slinsky. Uh, I run Prospecting On Demand. Uh, Prospecting On Demand is a coaching program and mentorship program for agency owners, coaches, and consultants. Uh, I also run a digital marketing agency called Sky Social Media for personal injury attorneys only. No, I will not take your referrals. Only personal injury attorneys. That's kind of been my secret sauce and what uh, I really want to share with you today that's going to make a massive, massive difference in the way that you outreach and create amazing value for your services and your audience. So I can't wait to share that with you. Uh, so yeah, long story short, uh, basically I was doing digital marketing uh, as an agency owner for five years or four years without even realizing it. For uh, the entire time I was in college, I had at least five uh, clients in my agency that was paying me at least $1,000 a month. Uh, to write, write for them on Facebook. Uh, and I didn't realize until after college, I met someone who told me they were a social media manager and that framed everything for me and really changed the way that I look at everything in my life and business. Created my marketing agency, failed miserably at it, then did amazing at it from the failures. And then I started coaching it because that's really my major passion. Uh, and that's why I'm here today, to share Love some it. of the expertise of my Love ups it, and downs, help you cut the learning curve <laughs> and uh, be more effective in your outreach process. Yeah, and just so you know, Alex, so the demographic here, most of the people that are gonna be watching this video in Dash U, um, I think a majority of the people, either one might be starting out their agency, so they're looking for a roadmap, they're looking for a, a proven method to go out, get clients, retain clients, service them, that whole agency uh, roadmap, right? And the second could be maybe even people that already have an agency, and they're looking to kind of step up to the next tier, whether you have one client and your goals hit five clients, whether you have five clients and you're trying to hit 20 clients, you know, everybody's got different goals. Everybody's in a different place. But I think that a majority of the people really, and I also know just from data, because I'm a data nerd, and, and every time we do any webinar or any post on our, in our Facebook group or anything at all that talks about a strategy to go out and actually get clients, right? The, the, we get match results. Like we'll, we'll have like three, 400, 500 people live on a webinar. We'll get hundreds of comments on the post. We'll get like, if, if we're selling something that revolves around going out and getting clients, our sales spike, right? So anything that revolves around that topic. And the reason is because that's kind of like the starting point, right? The prospecting and the sales avenue, which shit, your name of your company is prospecting on demand. So everybody in this lesson and guys, just so you know, Alex is going to be going over six main points is going to be going over understanding what your clients and audience want time versus money the where is waldo effect which i'm curious to hear about creating an io which i have no clue what that means but i'm super excited to hear it uh testing and validating and then selling it so without further ado alex i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to let you take over if you want feel free to share your screen anything that you got to do 
Um, I want everybody in the group and anybody who's watching this video to be able to take, like even if you could just hear one thing in this video that you can just take away from this, I want you to take it and run as fast as you can, guys, because that's really what learning is all about and what education is all about. Taking it, um, absorbing all the information, going out and putting it into your agency, into your real life, and maximizing your efforts and your results, guys. So I'm super excited. Alex, go ahead, brother, take it away. Awesome, thank you, man. Thank you for having me here, Chad. Super excited to share with you guys this entire process that I'm gonna implement. Now, I share this with the clients that pay me up to $10,000 to implement this, and I'm doing it for Chad and for you because I think it is absolutely critical that you understand this value to separate yourself from everyone else and be more effective in your outreach. And I think Chad gave me the best leeway possible. He mentioned that whenever anyone talks about prospecting, and probably mostly sales, how to create more revenue, everyone's chomping at the bit. And what I'm gonna show you today is how to actually utilize that proven data and psychology trick to make your offers way more effective and show you something that you're probably not even thinking consciously, but I promise you, you are thinking subconsciously. So here is the key, right? Why is everyone so infatuated with sales? Why is everyone so infatuated with the idea of new clients? It's because our brain is wired to want that dopamine rush of when the check hits the bank or when you get that ding on Stripe or when you get that notification on your phone that you were paid. But the truth is that <laughs> that dopamine, that rush is not even close to as important as getting it again. And then again, and then again, from the same person. Now, the only way to be able to retain your clients, obviously besides having incredible retention people and systems and white label team like Dash Clicks, is making sure that your offer expectations and your delivery are excellent. So with that being said, here is what you need to know. Everyone in their right mind wants to make more money. However, no one has really clarified why. I challenge you to think about it yourself right now. Why are you always looking at every single video that talks about a new strategy to generate new business? Why? What's the reason? Why do you want to make more money instead of retaining the clients that you already Drop have? Drop it in the chat, guys. I want to know too. Drop it in the chat. I really want to know what you guys are actually thinking. So Alex, can you ask that question? Because I know a couple of people are jumping in literally while you're asking it. Oh, what's up, y'all? Good to see you. So here is kind of my question to you. Why are you always chomping at the bit for the new thing? The new thing that allows you to generate more business and more clients. Why are we always chasing the money? instead of building a process to create the predictable revenue consistently, to build the recurring revenue. So here's my challenge. When you understand what I'm about to tell you, it will change the entire way that you think about your life and your business, and specifically how you actually execute your services and provide immense value to your clients by using this trick. We are blinded by money. Now we can use the word greed, but I think the connotation there is a little bit too extreme, but the reality is everyone in the world is blinded by money by the idea of creating more and new money. The truth is people that are effective in growing their business understand the value of repeating money from the same group of people because you provide them an indispensable service. Here is how you do that, okay? You need to understand what your client and audience wants and that is the time versus money trick. And it's perfect because you fit into this line as well. There is only one thing in this entire world that people care about more than money and that is utilizing their time appropriately. If anyone has kids like Chad does, or if anyone has had an experience where they have only limited time with a loved one, if you tell that person, instead of thinking about money, think about this, how much would you pay for an extra hour of time with your daughter, with your son, with your grandfather, with your mom, with your dad? Essentially, you would pay anything at all. But yet, you say that, but you act in a completely different way. You're always focused on the new money, on the things that are taking time away from you. Even though in your heart of hearts, you know that you have prioritized time over money, every action you do identifies and prioritizes money over time. This is only real talk. If you don't wanna hear real talk, you shouldn't be on this live, but that's the truth. You have consistently provided and put and prioritized money over time. And what I'm going to show you here today is how to switch that for yourself and your clients in order to make an irresistible offer that allows you to retain clients forever, build an infinitely scalable agency, and ensure that you are always prioritizing time over money. Does that make sense? If you have any I'm questions, excited to hear it. I'm getting my pen. I'm getting my paper. I've got my monster. I'm excited. I might even take my shirt off. Who knows what's going to happen during this? <laughs> so. 
Let's talk about the Where's Waldo effect. If you have heard of Where's Waldo before, please throw it in the comments below. If you haven't, essentially it's a children's book that every single picture is a picture that's hard to scan and you're trying to find a little guy who has a red and white striped shirt and that's the game. Can you find Where's Waldo? Now, when you use this in a business context, it becomes immensely powerful, right? Frankly, right now as an agency owner, you are in the Where's Waldo effect. Your audience, your clients are looking across the page and you look exactly the same as everyone else. Why? Well, it's because you keep talking about free strategy sessions and free consults and how you're gonna generate them more leads and how you're gonna build their business for them and how you'll do all these things that's the same as everyone else. Social media marketing and posting on Facebook and getting ads on Google and helping them with display ads, right? That's why you're always hunting for this new shiny object. You get the idea that if you can have something new, can stand out from the crowd a little bit more. But the key is not something new. It's just using this time versus money principle. That's it, and I'm gonna show you how to implement it here on this call today. Now, in the Where's Waldo effect, let's imagine instead of Where's Waldo being like this small and wearing the same clothes as everyone else on that beach <coughs> scene in Paris or wherever else that scene is taking you at that time, imagine if Where's Waldo was 10 feet tall and he was wearing a neon green suit. Do you think you'd have any problem whatsoever finding him? I think it would kind of defeat the purpose of the book, right? Open it up, there he is. Open up the next page, there he is. Open it up, there he is. What if that was you to your audience? This is the principle that I'm trying to bring to the table today, and it's all about creating an irresistible offer. So what I'm gonna show you today is one of the SOPs, standard operating procedures that I have in Prospecting On Demand Elite that I think is really, really key. It's an irresistible offer formula, seven steps that I'm going to share with you right here, and I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to break them all down. But it comes down to the simple time versus money principle. How can you save clients time while also making them more money? If you can save a client time, even if you struggle to make them more money, your service will be indispensable. So before I dive into the irresistible offer, I'll tell you about the service I provide to personal injury companies so you have clarity. Now, the personal injury service that we provide is not just a service for Google Ads. It's also a service for CRM implementation for two things. For client intake, most attorneys that are past 40 years old, maybe even 35, are used to writing all their case law either by hand or through a paralegal. That takes hours of time and wastes their precious time. Frankly, the attorneys I've spoken to have shared with me that that's what sucks life out of them. It's not going to court, it's not filing paperwork, it's doing the in-house paperwork that's required because frankly, to be a good attorney, you cannot have cursory notes. It needs to be meticulous and careful and ensuring that you understand every little detail because that's how you're in a successful attorney, especially in the personal injury space. So what we've provided is we teamed up with a company called Practice Panther. And this company provides a CRM specifically for personal injury attorneys that saves them hours of time. And what do they do? Well, similar to DashClicks, they offered me a solution as a white label partner. So I tell them that we created this CRM powered by Practice Panther that we offer them training on, ongoing support, and implementation of follow-up emails and messaging for them. Because even if an ad set goes bad, or they buy a new billboard, or they don't want more business, you know what they always want? They always want to save time. They always want to save time. Now you might think, but Alex, after working with you for six months, don't they already know how to use Practice Panther? You're absolutely correct. But they will keep you on at $1,000, $1,500, or even $2,000 retainer just for the sake of making sure that if they need any support at all, it's handed off. Because why? They want to save their time. That's it. That's the secret. You can leave the call right now if you want. You'll miss out on the awesome SOP, but that's it. <laughs> You're doing the same thing. You're so damn focused on how to create new business and new revenue and new models instead of saving your time, saving your clients time, and keeping the money that you have. That's the key. So I'm going to show it to you here right now and hopefully blow your mind. So let's dive in. Let's do it. This is the irresistible offer formula. It is a seven step formula that's broken down, detailed out that I'm gonna share with you right now, okay? Now here are the steps of the formula. I thought I would- Alex, can I ask you a quick question? 
Of course. Sorry, before you go, is there any way that we can, uh, I can have this PDF to put inside of the DashU membership area? Is that cool? Well, I mean, now that you asked me on the live, I think there's nothing else that I can say. Other than of course. <laughs> no, your... I know people are going to start screaming. It was the plan the whole time, wasn't it? Secretly just listen <laughs> to it on the live, right? No That's... pressure. Hey, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, of course. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. So uh, guys, just so you know, you don't, don't waste your time screenshotting or trying to write all this down or like taking mental notes. Um, I'll be putting this PDF, Alex, give it to me after. I'll drop it inside of the membership area for you guys so you can review it later on, okay? Awesome. So here is where we are at, okay? There is a seven-step formula here that's really important to understand. The first is the pain. What are the problems that you're dealing with? Basically, 99% of niches have a very similar pain. The really key element of separating yourself, especially if you are specialized in a niche, which I recommend, is knowing like the one pain that's unique to that person, even if it's just adding in a sentence. So I'll give you an example that's a higher level generic pain and then how you can specify, okay? So higher level generic pain for 99% of business owners are the two things we've been talking about. They don't have enough time, right? But most people are selling what? Not related to time. They're selling, we don't have enough leads, opportunities, or sales, right? That's like pretty much the 99% general pain of marketing companies or companies that want marketing. Chad, would you agree with me on that? 100%, dude. Right? That's basically it. So that's why it creates this Where's Waldo effect. Because when you're creating a customer avatar and this, the pain is the same as it would be for a chiropractor, as it would be for a plumber, as it would be for a dentist, as it would be for a financial advisor, it's like, well, shit, how do we make this ours? This is it, super simple, okay? So if you're working with a personal injury attorney, for example, the pain wouldn't just be, hey, I'm struggling to get more leads, opportunities, and, and sales. It would be, I'm struggling to create more personal injury clients. I know that sounds so simple, but it makes the biggest difference because that small positioning technique creates the perspective that you are the expert in this business because you didn't say chiropractic clients or cool sculpting clients. You said personal injury clients. That's the difference. Now, it's way better to have something specific to the niche, but like I said, they're usually very, very niche specific. So like, again, in personal injury attorneys, specifically, I've already shared, their biggest pain was struggling to have the case law done by hand by the paralegal, which was taking up too much time. That's like a very, very specific niche pain. If you can identify that specific niche pain and tell it to an audience uh, that is going to be reaching out to you or you're outreaching to before they say it, you'll win the business every time because everyone else is where's wall doing it. Everyone else is saying, can I help you get more business? Okay, well that seems pretty generic. Hey, can I help you save time and your paralegals time so that you don't have to write all your case law down while also creating you more opportunities? How does that sound? You know, that sounds pretty good, I'm interested. Let's talk, huge difference, understand the pain, okay? Solution, obviously what's the offer, what's the solution for their pain or problem? Again, think where's Waldo here. What is everyone offering as a solution? You go on dash clicks dashboard and what do you see? Well, PPC and ads and SEO. How are you selling it though? Well, we do PPC or we do ads or we do SEO. That's stupid. That's stupid because that's the same thing as everyone else. So here is what I do. What I'm gonna show you guys right now is the single most valuable thing I'm gonna tell you in this entire call. If you implement this, your business will automatically double the lifetime value of your clients. It's gonna make your sales go from at least 25% better right away. If you implement one thing, that's it. This is like my most secret method. I've never shared this ever on my group or in any other group. I'm sharing it today because I wanna help here at the Dash Clicks You. And this we is love it. you. We love, I'm just throwing that out there. We love you. And I didn't pay extra for this, guys, by the way. I'm just throwing that out there. This is just purely love. This screen is it. Chat, screen chat time. <laughs> so guys, this is a specific model and method. When you have a specific model and method, for example, the case method, which is the law firm growth model, it automatically creates positioning and separates you from everyone else. It makes you different. It makes you special. Now, I love the acronym model. So as you can see here, concentration on the right channels, audience targeting, systems for nurturing, evolution optimization. I really like acronyms. I've had plenty of clients go with the X multiplier model. So like roof X, um, like spa X, um, which has a weird connotation to, my, to me. But like, I really personally love the acronym model. And it's really powerful. When you tell an attorney like, hey, I've got the case model, which is a law firm, a creatable or predictable growth method for law firms, it's different than saying I run PPC ads. It's, it's almost different. like, it's almost like, like giving somebody a present wrapped in something sexy. 
it makes yeah. it makes everything just much more sexier. Just like also visually seeing this. You also, Alex, I want to ask you a quick question. You showed this, like when you're on the phone with a new prospect that's a law firm, are you actually showing this? Yes. So before every call, we send this to them. We also send a three minute demo video going through it and telling them the two option close at the end, which is I'll show you exactly how you can implement this yourself, or you can hire us to do it because we're experts. The two option close at the end of every demo. Um, one of the, one of my favorite ways of expressing this, it's the simplest way guys, right? You go to Starbucks and a latte there is like four fifty. It's shitty coffee. It's not even good. You're paying for the brand name. Now, where did the brand name come from? Well, it started as a name, Starbucks, right? And then they built brand recognition that allowed them to increase prices. You can go to a local uh, coffee shop and pay $150 for a latte that's 10 times better, but it's not the Starbucks one, right? So this is your Starbucks. This is how you separate yourself from saying, I sell coffee to I sell Starbucks. I don't sell PPC. I sell the case law firm growth method. This right here is the single most impactful thing I can share in creating an irresistible offer. It is so important. This is still not uh, very well used in the uh, space right now. And um, sharing this, I hope that I see a little bit more of it out there and I, and I hope that uh, you guys find value in it. So let's continue here and let's talk three, four, five, six, and seven. Uh, three is the results, benefits, and features. So what are the customers going to receive both tangibly and intangibly? It's very important. So like the classic intangible would be peace of mind, right? I love that. I think that's a really important intangible. Frankly, in my life, that's what I'm searching for every single day. It's my most important intangible thing I look for. I want peace of mind. I want to feel good about what I do every day um, and feel like I'm making impact. That's really what matters to me. So I think a lot of people in this world really care about that. Uh, and that's a really valuable, intangible thing to provide. The next thing is tangible. Like what are you providing to them actually? How many ad sets, like a website, a tool, like a report, et cetera, that kind of stuff. Value, so this is basic just understanding of the value proposition of your service. So risk reversal, making sure it's a no brainer for them. Let me remove this so we don't get distracted. Um, risk reversal, are you offering any guarantee? I don't recommend it, I'm just asking you. What's the investment price? How do we make this a no brainer? It should also say here ROI, which is missing. Um, positioning, number five, trust, authority, credibility, social proof. Uh, how are you positioned? Obviously this is related to the case method, related to your experience, what root, uh, results you have, all that kind of stuff. Sales strategy, um, how are you price anchoring? What's the urgency or scarcity? Can you only sell a certain amount of them? Uh, or is it urgent because you're talking to their competitors? What's the model there? And then objection handling. What are the five objections that you will be able to overcome? And write them down and overcome them. And that is the irresistible formula. If you go through this formula, you will be able to have a highly irresistible offer that focuses not just on revenue, but also focuses on their time solution and is easy to sell because you're not like everyone else. You're creating your own model and your own method. Alex, can I ask you a quick question? Is there any way like you saw, so I see like, um, if we actually, can you open that sheet back up really quick? It was uh, in regards to that one, yeah. two, three, four. Yeah. So like one, two, three, four, can you explain, or maybe just go into like two seconds, just some details? Cause I see it says concentrate on the right channel. So, Choose the channels where clients find you. Concert. Can you just go through that really quick? Just so yeah, like here would be the demo. Here would be the demo. Like I'll, I will give you a sample of the demo. So let's say we've reached out to someone asking them if they can handle more, uh, you know, law firm clients and potentially save time on uh, putting together case law. And he's like, yeah, you know, I'm interested in that. Say, okay, awesome. Do you mind if I shoot you a quick two minute video? Or here is a quick two minute video on my case model. It's a proven process and system for predictable law firm growth and time saving. <laughs> Check it out, I think you'll like it. Let's jump on a call tomorrow. So on the demo, it would be something like this. Hey there, my name is Alex Shlinsky from Sky Social Media. Hope you're doing well today. If you are watching this video, that means you could use help in creating predictable growth for your law firm, as well as ensuring that you save more time by not handwriting all your case law. So here's what I'm gonna share in this video. I'm gonna share with you a simple four-step solution that we've created called the case model. And obviously, yes, we wanna help you get more cases, frankly. So this is an acronym for the four things you see on this page. I'm gonna break them down here for you, and at the end, I'll share with you how we can jump on a call so you can implement this yourself, or frankly, if you like, hire us to do it for you. So let's dive in here. Number one is concentration on the right channels. Now, what we mean by this is ensuring that you are reaching out to your audience on the right channels. Most attorneys, as you know, in the competitive PI space are either paying for billboards, running ads on television, or doing radio ads. 
as we move into an ever increasing digital world, you need to be where your audience is. What levers can we pull that will identify and clarify for you the best opportunities in your space? So you have clarity right up front. We identify that Google ads, when people search car accident attorney near me, is the most effective. I'll share more about that on the call. The next thing we do is audience targeting and systems for nurturing and evolution and optimization. That's kind of how the mantle goes, right? And then you hit them with this, which is, so now that I've gone through my four step process, I would love to show you how I can do this for you on what we call a case audit. What we'll do is we'll go through our four step system for what you currently have in your business right now and identify the levers that need to be pulled to achieve better results that you are looking for. If we can help you, we'll be more than happy to make you an offer. And if not, we'll give you all the tools you need to do this on your own and anyone else on your team or marketing manager can effectively implement this model. We wish you all the best. Thank you so much for your time. Talk to you soon. And that's the model. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Mic drop. Uh, that was actually perfect. And I'm glad that you did that because I think where a lot of people are going to struggle is they're going to look at that and they're going to be like, wow, this is cool. But how do I actually, how do I implement this? Like, what do I say to these people? Do I just send them an email? So like going through that really quickly for just two minutes, literally, that's like a two minute video. Like guys, you can do that. Like literally just do that. Just copy what Alex said and you can just do it or put it in your own way, obviously. But that now that you can understand like the psychology of like, the, that's also, so you did a couple of things on there. Just, I want to point out. One, you pre-frame them, pre them of the sale, right? So they know that there's some type of sales aspect, whether they want to do it themselves or whether they want you to do it for them. You're letting them know that at the end of the call, they might be sold on something, okay? You're also setting expectations properly because you're telling them, hey, this is exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to do these four things for you, okay? And this is exactly the way that it's going to go, right? And you're also building tons of excitement because you're niching it down for their niche. When you open up the thing, it literally says, like law case, law firm uh, management or something like that. It literally was particular to their niche. So when they open it up, it's not like, oh, like you said, shit, this guy's just like a PPC guy. He's doing PPC for everybody. It has nothing to do with that. It's, it's predictable results for your niche, like literally exactly what you do. And I think that's where a lot of people and a lot of agency owners are not getting. Like if you actually do what Alex is doing and you do want to niche down and become a leader or a category leader in that specific space, which Alex is in for law firm guys, right? Or for even particular law firm for like personal injury, you said, right? So like going through that process and niching it down, you're able to do what Alex just did. You're able to be create a predictable system where you can actually go out to these guys and say, Hey guys, I have something for your personal injury law firm and you send them everything and it's all branded. You know who does this really well too? Um, Bob Mangat. Are you familiar with Bob Mangat? Of course. Yeah. We had Bob Mangat on a, on a live marketers mindset episode and he, he basically does the same exact, not same exact, but obviously similar approach where it's niche down very niche specific. And he does it with the medical field. And it's like, I don't even know what the hell type of medical, it's like some weird name. Um, I'm just not good with the, the, the medical field to be completely honest with you. Um, uh, but it, he targets a specific type of doctor. So then when he goes out there, he's like, Hey, I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you leads for like a rhinoplasty, blah, 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 whatever the fuck it's called. Right. So it's like certain things where like, if you're talking to a marketer, a general marketer doesn't understand what the hell you're talking about. Right. But now if you're talking to a, a marketer that specializes in rhinoplasty surgery, they're going to understand that the audience, the targeting, like everything, what services work the best, what system is, has predictable results down to the dollar. Right. So exactly. people they really need to focus on that. And somebody, uh, Daniel Joseph said, speaking their language is powerful. And that's really what it is. It's being able to speak their language, have the same lingo as them, right? Because everybody likes, imagine it going into um, like a club or a restaurant or a lounge or, so, or whatever, a birthday party. And there's a group of people you usually, and this is just me in general, I'm the type of person where, and it's pretty sad to say, but I hate small talk. I don't like talking about stuff that has no value, right? So like, you ever had a conversation with someone? You're like, oh, how was your day today? And you're like, well, day was good. Uh, oh, what, you know, what do you do? And you're like, well, I have a marketing company. And you're like, oh, cool. I'm a real estate agent. And then you're like, you're having this conversation. You're like, where is this going? Is this, gonna, is this going to affect any of our lives, right? Am I going, am I going to click with this person? Whereas, okay, it, I have another conversation where I go into an event Let's say I go into like a ClickFunnels event, right? And there's 4,500 people and they're all marketers. And I start a conversation with somebody. I'm like, hey, what's going on? My name's Chad. What's your name? They're like, my name's Bobby. I'm like, what do you do? Like, I'm a funnel. I'm a funnel. I built funnels. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. 
I have a marketing company and, and for white label, it's called Dashlist and we build funnels too. What do you use to build funnels? Why well, use click, right? So like right there that, that you, you're instantly building like a, a pure relationship with that person. You guys connect on the same page. And what I think people miss a lot is being able to connect with a person on a personal level, right? Having a specific connection with somebody will skyrocket your chances of closing that deal versus like Alex said, going in and being the general guy that's doing PPC that doesn't understand anything that you're talking about, right? There's zero connection during the prospecting call. It's just, there's nothing there, right? It's like almost having the first conversation where it's like, oh, great, another one of these freaking useless conversations that I'm gonna make pretend like my phone is ringing and walk away in a minute, right? It's like, you don't wanna be in a conversation like that, especially on a sales or prospecting call. So do what Alex says and you'll make a million bucks. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I love I'll it. let you continue. I'm sorry, I was going in, I got excited. No, you're good. That was that was my main point. Like that's really what I wanted to cover today. Like the irresistible offer, the case method and make sure everyone has like a very deliberate approach on how to do this. I think, uh, you know, what I've learned in the past, Chad, is that I can share 5 billion things on this one call, but if I can just give you, and you said this at the beginning, like one very specific thing to do, follow the seven steps, build your specific method and start outreaching there, then people will do it rather than, okay, now let me dive into my one call closer method. Let me talk about these things. It's like, just fucking do what I've already asked you to do, please. And the reason I say that in exasperation is because guys, just understand for a second, like literally what's actually happening. I'm giving you my most valuable asset right now that we've been already speaking about my time. I have a million other things to do, right? I've done these types of amazing trainings before and had people come to me and be like, Oh my God, from your free training, I made $58,000. It's incredible. I can't believe it. And I've also had people that are like, Hey, I haven't done anything because I was thinking about 800 million other things. Just do it. I gave it to you. I told you exactly what to do. Okay, there's, nothing, dude. there's no, there's no tricks. There's no magic. There's nothing else. Literally you've already tested it and validated it. If you create it, you send it out to a couple people, you get their feedback from it and then you go and sell it. That's it. You already have all the details. Just <laughs> do it. I really want to sell them. Focus. Their models. It comes down to focus. I'm going to give you a pure example so people can, can understand that in like layman terms, right? Like for me, my focus in my life is one, my family, and two, dash clicks. Those are the only two th in health. Now I just started working out. So I'm, now I'm getting into fitness and I'm trying to incorporate that into my daily life routine, right? So I don't, I don't, I don't care about any other things. Do you know how many times I have people messaging me and I'm a, on Facebook and Instagram. Um, hey, I want to partner up with you or I want to do this or I have this venture that I'm doing and I, I'd love for you to partner up with me or I, I, I don't, like even my brother-in-law came up to me the other day. He's like, hey, I'm, and they actually went and did it. They opened up a call center for like flipping like real estate wholesale deals and stuff like that. He's like, hey, do you want to partner up with me? And I'm like, no, I don't. I'm, I'm my, I, if I give you even two hours of my time every day to do that, I will lose two hours of my time on dash clicks or with my family or for my health. And I go to the gym, right? I don't want to do any of that stuff. I want to focus on one or two or three things. And that's what you guys have to do. You have to pick two, three, don't overwhelm yourself. Like Alex said, like 800 million things, just focus on one or two things. And if it's your agency and your family, great. Focus on those two things. Don't give a shit about anything else. Just pure focus, tunnel vision, going through and finding out how the hell do I get to the end of the tunnel? Where is this pot of gold? What do I need to do to get there? Right? That's what, that's where I think a lot of people in general, not even agencies, just people in general fail. Like you have no idea how many times I'll go to click funnels events or I'll go to any event or I'll speak to somebody or I'll, I'll do like a one-on-one -on -one session with somebody. Right. And they're talking to me and they're like, Oh yeah. You know, I wake up in the morning and uh, I, I start working on my agency. Uh, and then I have, um, uh, I have this lawn care company. So I got, I do this. Uh, and then, Oh, Oh, after I forgot after that, I'm also partnered with my wife and her bakery shop. So I go out and I do that. And then at night when I get home, I'll, I have my own podcast, which I try to make money on. And that's for like selling cereal to people in here. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, why are you doing why they're not successful? Yeah. Why are you, yeah. Why are you focusing on so much random shit when all you need to focus on is just one thing, right? And if you're not successful and just, this is just to be brutally honest, if you're in a situation and everybody's in a different situation, if you're in a situation and only you can answer this, everybody has their own value of what success is. If you're in a situation where you don't feel like you're at that successful stage yet, 
where maybe you're starting your agency, you have zero clients, you're making zero money, and that is just being unsuccessful. That's your vision as successful versus unsuccessful, right? Then you should not be focusing on anything but one thing. You need to get really good at that one thing. I'll give you another example. Social agency, which is our retail agency. I did that for like nine years, okay? And that's all I focused on for nine years to be able to build that up to a seven-figure company, build a team of now 30 people, build a nice office, build like all of these. I would never be able to do that if I had five businesses, okay? I did that business once that was perfected, and nothing is ever perfect, but close to perfect. Then I ventured out and I started doing dash clicks right? And now that's my next venture, which also still connects because social agency, it, all their, all, all of social agencies' clients get tucked in and dash clicks fulfill the orders. So we use our own company for the other company. So it's like, you get what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm not even technically doing something else. I'm not now going opening like a real estate brokerage, right? My focus is here. It's in the marketing game. It's in building a business that literally at the end of the day is what I like to do. I like to come in in the morning and I enjoy marketing. I enjoy doing live webinars, right? So I'm just focusing on this. And that's what you, I know I've been, I keep stressing about it and I'm like going rambling on here, but like, that's why most people fail in business and fail in life. They're, they have zero focus in anything. They're all over the place. I couldn't agree more. I think ultimately, if we can just simplify things a little bit better, Occam's razor, if people would really listen to that a little bit more, I think overall people would be happier, um, better suited for the road ahead, more able to take on obstacles, less emotional about everything, and uh, ultimately more successful in creating better impact. Uh, I've always found that my main source of stress or anxiety is from just carrying the load because frankly, a lot of times I feel like I can be Superman because I, I don't want to say no to anything. I want to be able to take on everything and do everything, but it just is not true. You just can't be that type of person. Um, it's okay to say no, and it's okay to understand wh where the time is appropriate to like just do it. You know, like I could, like I said, I can come on here and just teach five hundred things, but I want to get very specific. Do seven steps of my irresistible offer. Put together your four or five step formula and outreach. That's it. I get end a demo, a two minute demo. Those are three things to do. Do those things. Come back to me when you make a million bucks. You don't have to make a million to be happy about it. You can come back to me when you make a thousand bucks, but use it. I mean, that's it. It's literally that simple. And if you have any questions, uh, whether you're watching live or on replay, if you're on replay, I'm sure Chad will give me the questions so you can reach out to me personally. Um, and you're more than welcome as well to ask me any questions live uh, if you are here with us, which I appreciate. Thanks for being here. Yeah. And I'm going to do, I just want to, I'm going to do a couple just really quick rapid fire questions. Then we'll do a small Q and A and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. So I think one thing that and I just want to piggyback one thing that you just said, um, and uh, it has to do with uh, the, the clients and like what people think, right? So everybody always wants to jump from A to Z and it's impossible. It's impossible to jump from A all the way to Z. They want to go from one client to 500 clients. And if they can't do that, if they can't succeed in that in between, then they automatically give up. But I guarantee you, if you just try to go from A to B, which is one client, set realistic expectations for yourself. You go from A to B and you're like, my goal for this entire month is just to get one freaking deal, not 10. Okay. One deal. That's all I need to do. Once you actually hit that goal, you have no idea how much easier it's going to be for you to set your goal from B to C. And you're like, you know what, this month I want to maybe hit two clients. I want to see if I can do that and then go three clients and four clients. And every month don't try to go out and like serve the masses from day one because you're going to fail and you're going to fall on your face and it's just not going to work. Okay. So I just wanted to kind of piggyback off of what you just said, because I see a lot of people doing that. They want, they, they overcomplicate things for no reason. So Alex, if you can, yeah, if you can tell us, um, kind of like where you're at today with your agents, well, where you started, I think you said you started about four or five years ago, right? Five years ago. No, and then you didn't really no, know. Nine years ago now, nine years uh, 2010. Ago. So well, 2011, so eight years. Um, which is crazy, uh, eight years ago. But again, it wasn't like, it wasn't an agency. So I'll just frame again one more time so, so it's understood. Like my next door neighbor was an attorney. Facebook had just come out with business pages at that time. He had a sense that that would be pretty important. So he wanted me to post for him every single day on Facebook and do once a week constant contact emails, which was easy to do as a college student at UCF. He paid me a thousand bucks a month to do it. Um, after a couple months of doing it before I went to UCF, 
Um, you know, I realized that he probably knows people from law school that he's still connected with. So I asked him, uh, he connected me with like 20 people. Um, 10 of them, I think ended up becoming clients, lost almost all of them immediately because I couldn't handle all of those people. Um, but I was upfront about it. I told them like, Hey, I think I bit off more than I can chew. Um, I'm pretty new at this. I'd love to come back to you. So I kind of maintained with like four or five people that I actually vibed with, including two that were already in Orlando. Um, and then two that were in, uh, Gainesville. And I think one in Dayton or, uh, no Daytona, not Dayton, Daytona, um, beach, Daytona beach. So it was like five people that I was working with for four years, but the whole time, anytime would, anyone would ask me like, you know, I was a student. That's, that's, I didn't have a business. I, I was just making money. Like I didn't even have an LLC. I didn't do the LLC until 2014. So when I left school, um, I thought, again, this is just a side hustle. No one's doing this. It's not a business. I never heard of Ty Lopez. I've never seen Sam Ovens. I've never seen an ad about it. I never heard about it. All I knew was ads on TV, radio, uh, billboards, never considered once an ad on Google, never thought about it, never thought about ads on Facebook. It just wasn't a thing. I was just posting and sending constant contact. There was no trigger that this was a business in any way. Um, I ended up working for the Miami Dolphins because uh, I'm a huge sports fan, it's, I think for a different time, but basically called them 60 days in a row until they said, yes, you can come in, stop calling us. Um, so I became a journalist for the Miami Dolphins and, um, and the UFC. And I went to a UFC event uh, in Hollywood, Florida, and that's where this ended up kind of being a serendipitous opportunity. I met some guy that was on a Twitter application never seen before called TweetDeck, and I was like, hey, what is that? And he was like, oh, well, I'm a social media manager. And when those words came out, suddenly the last four or five years of what I've been doing had formed into a singular three word sentence. And I was like, whoa, dude, I do that, but I've never even heard of that word before. And as soon as I searched it on Google, as soon as I looked it up on Facebook, I got sucked in. I joined Internet Marketing Super Friends Facebook group, and then suddenly ads came in from Sam Ovens and Dave Rogamoser and Ty Lopez, and I bought a couple courses. Um, and then I was like, holy shit, like I've been doing this already for five years. This is insane. I can't believe this. this is so strange. How did this never like occur? It's kind of like that scenario, you know, when you haven't heard or spoken about something in forever, and then you hear it from someone, and now suddenly you see it everywhere. That's kind of what it was like. Um, I got sucked into the vortex of social media management, even though I've been doing it for four or five years, didn't even realize it. Uh, I quickly quit working with the Miami Dolphins about six months later, had my wife quit her job and we went full force on this. Uh, we absolutely crushed it for about a year and then completely flopped. We went on vacation uh, for our honeymoon uh, for an entire month. We thought we had all the systems and procedures and processes. We left with like 10 or so clients, like 12 or so thousand in recurring revenue, came back with like 2000 client, 2000 uh, in recurring revenue. Um, so it was a pretty disastrous experience. That was in 2015, um, 2000, yeah, 2015. And um, about a year later, we ended up hiring Reach Local, which was the company that we kind of teamed up with that allowed us to hand off fulfillment, build out all these systems and executions. And then about two months after that, we built prospecting on demand. And I've been coaching since uh, basically the late 2016, which is my biggest passion alongside speaking. Uh, and Chad and I will be at an event uh, next week where we're both speaking and I'm MC. Here so I super, super excited about that. But yeah, that's kind of like the story. Um, it's really crazy in retrospect to think about. I'm, I'm super grateful for it. Um, it was a, a very interesting journey. And I think I've just scratched the surface of what I'm capable of. Love it, man. Two quick, two, two things I want to mention. One, um, if every, if anybody, I'm going to do a special thing. Um, I, I went out and bought a bunch of tickets to Caracon um, from Ross, uh, which is the owner of Caracon. I think I bought like 15 tickets or something like that, um, which is just general admission tickets. And then I gave them all the way to everybody in the Dash Clicks community. Okay. So what I would like to do is for those of you guys that are actually here watching this, or even if you're watching the replay, just so you guys know, the event is October 4th and 5th um, of 2019, in case you're watching this like a year later for some reason, um, which is it's still like a week and a half and it's in Chicago. Um, so if there, for those of you guys who want to come to the event, uh, just go ahead and post in the Dash University group or just find me on Facebook, Chad Kaderi, and just shoot me over a quick DM. And I will personally love to buy your ticket and come to the event with me completely for free. So all you got to do, is just shoot me a DM, I'll buy your ticket, and you just, you just obviously have to pay for your plane ticket and your hotel and your travels and stuff, but I'll buy your ticket, it's like 300 bucks, and I will, I will have you come with me, and uh, we're probably most likely, I spoke to Ross, gonna have like a whole dash click section um, inside, it's gonna be a 500 person marketing conference, we're gonna have a dash clicks booth, I'm gonna be speaking at the event, which is crazy, alongside amazing speakers, like Damien John from Shark Tank, what? 
Alex is going to be emceeing the event. It's going to be an amazing, amazing event. So if you guys are all obviously in the marketing space. You should definitely be out there if you're not out there. And if for any reason you can't afford the ticket or you just don't want to pay for it, cool. I'll buy the ticket for you. Okay. I'll spend the money for you. I just want to see you guys out there. And I want to hang with you guys. Um, so just wanted to kind of throw that out there. Alex, back to you really quick. One or two more things and we're going to close this out. We got about 10 minutes left. Um, how many clients are you currently servicing today? So in my agency, we've had about 10 clients retained for almost seven years. We've lost one, wow. client, lost one client last year from the dumbest thing possible. Uh, we made a guarantee on that, uh, which is illegal in the United States. And uh, the Florida bar threatened to disbar him. So he had to fire us. Okay. Um, that was that retention is crazy. Yeah, yeah, the retention's really good. Like I said, we don't lose the clients because of the CRM, frankly. Uh, we're okay at the ads. Reach Local's honestly not that great, but um, you know we do good enough for them. And uh, almost every client we work with also runs billboards. So as you can imagine what type of company we're talking about. They are pretty uh, high-level companies, multiple attorneys. Every single attorney we work with has at least three partners. So and that's really something that everybody should think about, right? So maybe instead of going after like a lot of these small mom and pop shops who don't have advertising budgets uh, might only be with you and churn out after like month two or three, because they, you have to think about this, right? The difference between the companies that Alex are working with, which probably are multi-million dollar law firms, right? With multiple partners and they do, they have the money to spend, right? So the thousand or $2,000 that they're spending Alex with Alex and service fees, and then another five grand that they're spending in ads, just let's say that, that's nothing to them. They can do that, right? So, and they'll keep doing that because it, it doesn't even make them flinch, right? So, so here's, the, here's a really important piece to this, right? If you're new and trying to reach out to those people, you're going to get frustrated pretty quickly for the amount of red tape and decision-making process. It doesn't yeah. take one day for these companies to make a decision. <laughs> um, the reason why I've been successful in this space specifically is frankly due to the referrals that I've created. Um, through networking. That's really what it came down to. If I was to restart my agency today, I would definitely have to go in a different route until I can get to one of the big companies that allows you to connect with the other big companies. That's really how I've done it. Otherwise, the only real effective way to get in front of those larger companies is direct to the market manager. Do not go to anyone else other than the marketing manager. Any company of a size that has a million dollars has a marketing manager in-house, guaranteed. Uh, yeah. especially personal injury attorneys who are consistently. <laughs> but, but it's um, worth it, right? To, so you put an extra time, even if the closing cycle, instead of two or three weeks, it's two or three months. Right? It's hard to say if it's worth it, honestly. And I'll tell you why. It's hard right. to say if it's worth it. Long-term, it's worth it. But it depends on kind of where the company is at. If someone is brand new, it's definitely not worth it because they're going to get burnt out and frustrated so quick. Like the people are super fickle and emotional. Like I, I thought I was only like that, but the truth is everyone's like that. Everyone's a, um, you know, I, I'd say this to myself, I'm being real, I'm joking here, but like everyone's a little bitch inside. That's the truth, right? <laughs> We're all trying to be something different and like- be, everyone, everyone has bitch assness in them. Right, and, and I don't mean being rude or mean to someone, I'm talking about like not stepping up to the plate, lacking self-love, feeling like they're not good enough. Like I portray myself as someone who is great because I am great, but also inside I'm a human being too. Like, did I do this right today? Am I good enough today? Am I low in energy? Like I'm a human being, right? So I think one of the big things is important. If you're new to this and trying only to go to the higher level people, um, you, you have to have patience. And I think, uh, I think it's easy to say you have to have patience. It's a lot harder to actually have patience. So if you're brand new, I would say try to go to the middle tier type of companies, not ones that are starving for cash, but that can actually use you while spending about 10 to 20% of your time trying for the big fish, like the yep. whales. If you can go after even one or two whales, whales breed, or breed with other whales, right? Like that's how you create the opportunities. All of my clients, every single one was direct referral only. Um, this is coming from someone that coaches and teaches outbound prospecting because I've done it so many times for other niches and other processes and other models, but they came from referrals and that's why we've retained them. And that's why we've kept them because of the model and offer we made today, which which I've shared with you today, and it's super impactful. You also asked me how many clients I have. Obviously, that's my marketing agency for my coaching program. I have about 50 active clients um, and about 500 people that have invested in Prospect on Demand in general. Um, it's been awesome. Love it, man. And, and Damien uh, uh, added something. Damien said, quality over quantity. Don't be afraid of high ticket. Get your offer irresistible. Love yes. that. Uh, Dimitri also said, kind of like the influencer movement, they had no idea what to call themselves four years ago when you were talking about, um, you, know, you know, like I didn't even know I was a digital marketer or social media yeah, marketer, no right? So I'm guys, my mom about it, Chad. It was hilarious. I'm like, mom, 
I've been doing something for four years that I only found out what it was today. What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> she, she guys, you, guys have, you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the chat. We got nine minutes left. Um, drop them in the chat. Um, in the meantime, while you guys are asking your questions, um, I'm going to ask you two quick rapid fire questions. One, what's your favorite tool that you use to run your agency? Oh shit. My favorite tool. One tool, favorite tool that you use the most and you love it and you can't live without it. What's your favorite tool? I mean, it's a cop out Facebook messenger, but like an actual cool. tool that's related to it. Uh, messenger funnels from Andrew Guy Club is really cool. It's uh, it like lets you like tag what each person is. It's pretty dope. But what's that called? Messenger what, funnels? Messenger funnels, I believe it's called. Okay. I'm definitely going to check that out. Yeah, it's awesome. pretty cool. And then, and then uh, any guys, go ahead and drop any questions that you have in the chat. Any questions at all? Uh, and then, um, Alex, if you can go back to the day that you started your agency, what would you do different? What would be the one thing that you would do different if you could take yourself all the way back to the day that you started your agency? Wow. I don't like answering these questions fast because I feel like they deserve like appropriate time to really make sure I give you the best thing. Because otherwise we give like shit. <laughs> Fire out anything that comes to your brain first. Because I know when I asked you that question, looking into your eyes, something came into your brain. Just fire. It was the first thing that came out. Yeah, mentorship faster. Okay, beautiful. I was really, I was really scared of hiring someone because I've never had money before. Um, so I had a very scarce mindset around money. Um, and I kind of believed that I would just kind of be like another you know, drop in the bucket for someone that they wouldn't really care. That was part of the reason why I wanted to become a mentor and coach. Cause like, I do care a lot, probably too much, but it's okay. Like I'd rather that than the opposite. Um, I literally remember the first time I spoke to a mentor still does it today. Uh, he told me this program, I think was six grand at that time. And I laughed. I was like, you're so far off from what I'm willing to invest. It's crazy. So I bought a bunch of thousand dollar courses cause I believe in my own self education, but I just lost so much time because of it, frankly. I just lost so much time. I mean, there's no reason, there was no reason for it. If I just manned up, frankly, like I was saying before, the little bitch inside me, just manned up and, uh, you know, asked my uncle for 10 grand and like, yo, I'll pay you this back. Just give me the opportunity because he could definitely have done it. I probably would have just gotten a really effective mentor. Um, and because mentorship, frankly, has changed my life. That, that's the fastest growth I've ever had. Not just as a business owner, but like being an effective entrepreneur, being an effective business owner is also being an effective human being. Like, self-love value understanding your energy levels understanding burnout like understanding how to be at your top uh you know your top speed and being super efficient like all of those things were things i didn't consider until mentorship and when i considered that right away that's where i created massive change because for me really i just needed the light i need to be shown where the light was to turn it on i didn't need anyone to turn the light on for me um and mentors are the only people that can do that love it man we got some questions here from the audience uh somebody said uh how do you overcome uh, having no case studies. Uh, okay. How do you overcome having no case studies? Usually working with a partner um, that has the case studies is the ideal scenario. Um, but everyone has their first client. Every doctor has their first patient. Every lawyer has their first case. Um, if you have no case studies, you either need to uh, have an appropriate price because of that and be upfront about it, or you need to work with someone like Dash Cooks who can give you case studies. And that's honestly the key. Um, biggest thing though, uh, oh, that's Angel asking. Um, but anyways, like if someone is really thinking about that, you're in a really scarce mindset. You're creating an objection before it happens. Let the objection happen and then work through from there. Um, I think that's a really important thing. Danny asked, uh, with the white label service called Practice Panther? Yeah, they do not offer white label services. I, I know the person that runs the company. So I told them about it and that was a special deal I've had. It doesn't mean that you can't uh, have similar companies like that, but that is the company. Um, Damien, thanks so much for the absolute fire. Also, who are the Dolphins picking with the first pick in the NFL draft? Thousand percent, Tua Tagovailoa. I'm praying to God, tank for Tua, hashtag tank for Tua. Um, I bought a tank shirt. It's really, really funny. Um, Dimitri, do either of you practice anything in regards to working on mindset, mantras, positivity? Seems to be a lot of this connected to everyone that's successful. Yeah, thousand percent, Dimitri. I meditate. I try to meditate every single day. I didn't this morning because um, I woke up a little bit later. So I'm going to probably meditate right after this call for probably 10, 20 minutes. Um, I've been doing that for three months now. It's been massive. Uh, I write in this journal quite often. This is the five minute journal. Um, the hat fell, but this is the five minute journal. Uh, this is a really awesome piece here. I love this book. Um, it tells you in the morning to write in three things you're grateful for. Uh, three things uh, that would make today great, and then two affirmations. And then at the evening, it tells you three things that were amazing for today and how you could have made the day better. Um, framing is everything in life because life is extremely difficult in general, especially being a business owner. So um, 
having a way to frame that is just really powerful. Just changes who you are. So I, I really strongly advise that. Yeah, and I think I think for me, um, I, I personally, I'll be honest with you guys, I don't do uh, any like uh, yoga or meditation or anything like that. Um, uh, that's just not me. Um, I just recently actually started going to the gym, which is something where I do at, at I wake up at 6:45 in the morning. Uh, I'm at the gym. I've been doing it for the last couple of days. Go to the gym at 7 a.m. Uh, work out for one hour with a personal trainer. Go home. Uh, get back and like I've seen like my day. Um, like is literally full of energy before I was always like down and dead and like trying to like pick myself up when I get to the office because I don't drink coffee. If I drink anything, it'll be like a monster or something like that. Just to wake me up a little bit. Uh, but ever since I've been started going to the gym in the morning, I have literally changed my life. I feel good. Um, number one, obviously, cause you feel great after the gym. And then number two is you're so awake in the morning. It's insane. Um, I do that. And then as far as like mindset stuff, I do watch tons of videos and I do have my own mentors that I watch people that are above me in the space um, where I want to learn from them so I can try to get to their level. And then when I get to their level, I go to the other guy that's on top and I just keep trying to crawl my way up to listening to these different people. So yeah, definitely. Um, Dimitri said, ah, yes, I was given the Joe uh, Dispenza book recently on this subject, uh, trying to get it into myself. And ironically got a similar journal for my B day. Need to start using it. Yeah. So my birthday passed and I didn't journal on my birthday. I feel like I'm a little bit late, but I'm probably going to write for it. Uh, Cause that was one thing I felt when I had my birthday on September 4th, I felt, uh, Happy birthday! Thank you. I felt uncomfortable because I didn't write anything the year prior and then I didn't do it again. So I'm going to do that, but thanks for that reminder. Yeah. Super valuable to do that, to kind of get a sense of where you've been uh, every year. Super powerful. Thanks Damien. Appreciate that. Love it. And then uh, Angel said, train, <laughs> train insane and remain the same. Let's go. Uh, uh, Dimitri said, understood. Thanks for you both for the insight. Alex sent a heart. Uh, uh, Damien said, happy belated birthday, Alex. All right, guys, we are going to wrap it up. This has been once again, Alex Shalinsky from Prospecting On Demand. Alex, one, thank you so much for coming out. Appreciate it. Um, if anybody wants to find you or ask you any questions afterwards, the best way to reach you. Yeah, best way is definitely Facebook. Um, it's my last name. So facebook.com slash Shalinsky. Might be tougher to spell. So S-C-H-L-I-N. S K Y. Um, you can also find me on prospecting on demand.com. Love it. Thank you guys so much. Uh, this has been uh, another dash university episode of influencer secrets. I love you guys and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one, everybody.